Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. God, you're marvelous. God, you're wonderful. God, you're magnificent. You are holy, God. You are powerful, God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, God. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Hallelujah, that you have made, God. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Is anybody glad today, amen, to just be alive, amen, to be, praise God, here in the presence of the Lord, amen? Is anybody excited about salvation today? Hallelujah, that if Jesus were to come back right now, you know that you would be caught up to meet him in the air. Come on, somebody. And guess what? If you ain't ready, it's time to get ready. It's time to get ready. It's time for a change. Amen. How it's time to do something different. It's time to get on board for the Lord. It's time to seek the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We come to bless the Lord today. We come to magnify him. We come to exalt him. We come to glorify him. We come to lift him up. We come to see him, to hear from him. We come to know him, to hear God. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. Amen, somebody. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, somebody with me. And let us exalt his name together. Come on. Did anybody cry out to him today? Is there something that you need for him to do specifically to say, God, if you don't do it today, I don't know what I'm going to do. Come on, somebody. I will bless you, God, while I'm waiting on my increase. I'm going to bless you while I'm waiting for you to come through. I'm going to bless you in the middle of the pain, in the middle of the anxiety, in the middle of the distraction, in the middle of whatever it is. I will bless you, God, because you're worthy. You are worthy, God. Somebody didn't wake up this morning, but I'm here, God. Somebody was on the way to the house of God and didn't make it, but I'm here, God. Somebody said I wouldn't be here today. I almost lost my mind. I almost committed murder. I almost committed suicide. But I'm here today. I'm here today. I'm here today, God. I'm here to bless your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come on, give God some praise. Give him some glory. How is the fast song? Come on, baby. Come on, there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We are excited. We're excited to be here today. We want to welcome you, praise God, to our service today. We want to welcome you into the house of God today. Yes, we got a little, started a little bit late. I want to apologize for that. Thank you. Say, man, praise God. My husband and I are not people who or don't like to be on time, amen. Praise God. However, the place that we're renting from, you know, anywho, God is going to work this thing out in our favor, amen. We're here, praise God. In spite of all the mishaps, the lateness, and the things that have been going on behind the scenes, we are here, and we're here to bless the Lord, amen. We believe God is up to something good on our behalf, amen. How we know it's not going to always be this way, amen. That's why we learn to bless him and to praise him in the middle of what? Lord is doing in 
our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, baby. Amen. Hallelujah. We're excited about what God is doing over here at this part of his ministry. Amen. We are serving, being servant leaders, doing the will of God according to the will of God. Amen. Again, we welcome you, amen, to Kingdom Restoration Ministries. We thank you that you didn't count a robber to join with us today. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to call my husband, of Elder Joseph Slaughter, and he's going to lead us into prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. While he's coming to go on and praise him. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hey, God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Father. God. Hey. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Father. Yes. Lord, we just want to give you praise this morning. We honor you this morning, Lord God. Oh, God. We turn our eyes towards you. Lord Jesus, this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We give you all that we have yes. this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for being the restoration ministries this morning, Lord God. Thank you for thank you for uh, for the many blessings, Lord God. Thank you for the woman of God this morning, Lord God. Uh, Pastor the beast morning, Lord God. Father, we come not to do business as you do, Lord God. But, but wait on you this morning, Lord God, to have your way in the service, Lord God. Thank you for all that you do, Lord God. Uh, Give your people ears to hear, room to receive, but also be doers of your word this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on. You've been through hell and high water this week, some of you. Some of you didn't even know if you were going to make it through the week. It's Sunday morning. You said, Lord, if I can just make it to the house of God, if I can just make it, God, to Sunday, hallelujah. Yeah, you're praying for on Monday. You're worshiping on Tuesday. You're praying on Wednesday. Come on, somebody. You went to Bible study on Thursday. You fasted on Friday. Saturday, you said, God, I'm going to rest up to tomorrow and Sunday. And when Sunday get here, I'm going to go into the house of God and I'm going to give you a praise and praise for all that I had to go through, God. Woo! Hallelujah! Come on! On the child, hell on the child. Come on, somebody. Kids acting crazy. Come on, but I'm here. God, if I can make it to the house for the chains of God. Or, hey, and maybe you couldn't make it to the house. But you said, Lord, that's the least of the heaven's service Sunday morning. And that's going to be on Facebook. And that's going to be on YouTube. And I know they're going to praise God. Because that's a praise in the worshiping church. That's a praise in the worshiping people. And God, I need to just let loose. Maybe you're lying in your bed and you can't get out, but you can raise your hands to heaven and say, God, I thank you. I'm still here. In spite of it all, I'm still here to give you glory, to give you praise. Something, something in the sense of God. Get together. Woo! But I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. And listen here, y'all. Praise God. God bless you, brother. It ain't just about what he's done for me, but it's about what he's going to do for me. You can do the work to come on in. Hallelujah. It's about what God is going to do for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody knows your story. Nobody knows what you've been through, what you had to go through just to get here. They don't know the struggle. They don't know what's coming against your mind. They don't know what people said about you. And what they did to you was to say, God, if I can just make it to your house, God, today, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to 
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, we welcome you and we thank you. Amen. For your presence. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for your giving, not just giving of your money, but giving of your time. Amen. You could have been any place else. Amen. You could be doing anything else. Even for those that are watching us on Facebook and YouTube, you don't have to watch us. You don't have to fellowship with us via um, Facebook and all these other platforms. So we appreciate you. Amen. And we're praying God's continued strength in you. Amen. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and as I normally do, I'm going to sing a song and then we're going to get into the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to take some time to worship him. Amen. Yes, Jesus.
Give God some praise in the house. Amen. Come on, bless our God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some glory. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He is worthy regardless of what it feels like, regardless of what we might be going through, regardless of what he, she, they say, God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to get into the word of God. Amen. The scripture reading for this morning is going to come from Psalms 139 chapter. I'm going to read in verses 13 through 16. The 139th Psalm, verses 13 through 16. Amen. And my reading may be a little different than what you have. I'm reading from the NASB version. Amen. And as it is our custom, we ask that you stand for the reading of God's word. Amen. Psalm 139, starting at verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. Verse 15, my frame was not hidden from you, when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth, your eyes have seen my unformed substance. And in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. May God bless the hearing and the reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. My, I am Pastor Denise Slaughter. Amen. I serve here at Kingdom Restoration Ministries with my husband, Elder Joseph Slaughter. Amen. And we are excited about this word that God has given us today. As you can see, I want my husband to go ahead and put the picture of that butterfly in the cocoon. We're talking about the topic is I'm changing. Amen. I'm changing. As children, many of us learn about the process by which a caterpillar changes into a butterfly. It begins with a hungry caterpillar hatching from an egg, which stuffs itself with leaves growing plumper and longer through a series of molting or shedding its skin. One day, the caterpillar stops eating. 
hangs upside down from a twig or leaf and spins itself a silky cocoon. There within its protected casing, the caterpillar radically transforms its body, emerging as a beautiful butterfly. Metamorphosis is a series of major changes in an animal's body form as it moves through its life cycle. We as the body of Christ and as people in general, we go through a metamorphosis of some kind. We are conceived in our mother's womb, amen? We start as an egg, amen, with conception. And then the larva is the next stage. That's the childlike stage that we go through. We're learning to walk and we're learning to talk and we're learning, we're learning to speak and communicate. And we go through those changes. And then we become the pupil, which is the young adult. Now we're, we're going through high school and we're getting ready to graduate, amen. We're getting ready to go to college. We get ready to, to eat or go to the military or whatever it may be. We become a young adult. And now I don't need mama and daddy's attention as much as I used to. They taught me some things. Amen. They taught me how to hold my spoon and my fork. They taught me how to walk. They taught me how to be respectful. They taught me how to put on my clothes and take a good bath. Come on, somebody. They taught us some things for living. Amen. They, some parents may have taught your children how to keep a checkbook and how to save some money. You know, you may have taught them how to drive. I remember I started driving when I was about 14, amen? Daddy just, we lived on this long road. He just put us in the driver's seat. Back in the day, we could do that. Put us in the driver's seat in this long road. and said, just go, amen? And so that's how we learned how to drive. So our parents taught us some things as young adults, as children, because they knew that we're going to grow into young adults. And we we're going to leave the nest, so to speak. We we're going to leave and They wouldn't be able to have a hand on us and see us all the time to correct us. And so they taught us how to do some things. Then we got into adulthood and we went off and we got married, some of us, and we had children and we had careers and we owned businesses and we started doing adult things. Amen. That's the metamorphosis that we go through. Amen. But the thing about metamorphosis and change is if you don't change, if you don't grow, if this caterpillar never did what it was supposed to do, if it was disturbed, if it didn't go through the process, it would die. We can't allow others as we're going through our metamorphosis, as we're going through our change, even as a child of God. We can't allow others to touch us in certain ways as we're going through the change. We change, God said, but some of you are still trying to remain who you used to be. You become double-minded and unstable, as James said, in all of our ways. We change. I don't look like what I used to. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't wear the clothes that I used to. I don't go to places that I used to go. I change. I change the way I think about money. Whereas before I had my paycheck spent before I even got it, I knew what I was going to spend it on. Come on, somebody. But my mindset had to change because now I'm grown up. Now I'm in adulthood. Now I got some other things that I need to do. And some things that God, some plans that God has for me to do. God said you change, but you're still trying to remain who you were. You got people in your life that you grew up with, and they remember you when. They remember Nisi from high school. They remember Nisi from college. They don't know that Denise, amen, is now, amen. And so they want to see you as you used to be. And we can't allow people to keep us stuck in the past. Come on, I used to fight at the drop of a dime. I would pull a knife, put rings on, I'd be ready to throw blows, bro. Come on, I used to. That's how I used to live. And I'm going to tell people, don't get it twisted because I can still throw blows. Come on, somebody. I had to protect myself, protect my family to do what I need to do. I can do that, amen? But I don't go looking for that anymore. Come on, because I've changed. God said, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. He says, you're double-minded, you're unstable, you're dying because you refuse to let go of the past. Hallelujah. Either we're going to be who we are or be who you're becoming and who God called you to be or be you, but you can't be both. You can't be who you used to be and trying to be who God is telling you to be or leading you to be. You got to be one or the other. You can't live on two sides. Forgetting those things that are behind me, I press forward to the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I can't just cuss you out like I used to. I can't just do some of the things that I used to do. I don't want to do those any, things anymore because I've been changed. Hallelujah. My mind is focused.
walk is that I'm looking to heaven. I'm looking to eternal life. And I'm not going to allow you to stop me from getting eternal life. You might act like a fool. You might cuss me out. You might try to lay your hands on me. But there's some things that we just can't do anymore. I don't club anymore. I don't wear the short shorts anymore. I don't have my body parts showing anymore. I change. I metamorphose. Ah. And as I said, as we begin to change and we begin to get in this cocoon, we got to be careful who we let touch us. Hallelujah. Because some people will try to pull you back. I remember when. I remember when you used to do X, Y, Z, and you did it with me. I remember we used to do it. It's okay for you to remember, but baby, hey, I'm not there anymore. Come on, I'm assured, I'm grown, I'm adult now. I'm, I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, still now. I'm not, if I go to the club, it's going to be the prayer. It's going to be cast some devils. It's going to be to lay hands on some folk. Come on. It's going to be let's set some folk free. Hallelujah. We metamorphose. So either going to be who we are in God or we're going to might as well go on back out in the world. But you can't live on two sides. God told me about the identity switch and stolen identity where we spend so much time, so much time trying not to be that we don't know who we are. I remember growing up, I said, ah, I looked at my mama. I ain't going to treat my kids like that. I ain't going to raise my kids. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have this money, do that. I spent so much time trying not to be that I was a being who God created and called me to be. God said, we got to change that mindset. It's time out for us to stop focusing on what we're not going to be and just be who God called us to be. Hallelujah. Identity switch. We stolen somebody else's identity. I grew up because of being molested and being having a tempted rate and all these different things that happened to me. I began to look at certain preachers and teachers and I began to emulate them and want to be like them and sound like them and look like them and my moves and my behaviors were like them. And God said, uh uh, you, you just stole somebody's identity. That's not who you are. Give them the identity that and let me make you you. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, when you begin to change, when you begin to metamorphose, when you begin to switch, when you begin to come your own self, you walk with more confidence, you walk with more boldness, you don't care what they say about you, you don't care how they look at you. Why? Because I know who I am and I know whose I am. And what you say don't matter anymore. Hallelujah. We're living life based off of what others say, what they like. Instead of being our true, authentic self. God is saying some of us, and I used to have multiple personalities. And I'm not talking about crazy, because I've never been crazy. But when I was with my girlfriends, I acted one way. When I was home, I acted another way. When I went to church, I acted another way. When I was at work, I acted another way. God said, you got multiple. Who are you? Who are you? But when you become your true, authentic self, the same way I talk when I'm in church, I talk when I'm at work. The same way I dress in church, I dress, you know, whatever that I am being. If you don't like the me, that's your problem. Because I've been changed. My mind has been changed. I let go of the stolen identity and I got my identity back and I know who I am. And I know who God has called me to be and it doesn't matter. You may not like my dress. I don't care. I love it. You may not like my hair. don't matter. I love it. Amen. That's what it means that we're living our true authentic self. And guess what? When you live your true authentic self, you allow others to live their true authentic self. It's a two-way street. Amen. Stop living life based off of what others, what mom and them say. You know, and mom and parents, we mean well. You know, I know raising my children, I said I didn't want them to suffer and go through certain things, so I made sure certain things they didn't have to deal with. But some of that stuff, they had to, they know how to survive. Come on, somebody. You got some families now, some children, you know, they were given everything. Amen? If the lights got cut off, they had a fit because they didn't know what to do. Baby, light a candle. Turn the flashlight on. If the water was cut off, they didn't know what to do. You better get some buckets and some jugs and whatever. You got to fill it up. Come on, fill that tub up till the water run out. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Live life authentically. Know how to survive. Know how to come through your process. And sometimes, most of the time, coming through that process is a lonely time. People don't call you. 
It's like the friends that you used, used to hang out with, you know, they don't come see you anymore. And you're like, oh, what's going on? But God said, I have you in a process. I have you in a place that I got to change some things in you. I got to make some things right in you. And then it gets to a point you look back and say, well, Lord, I'm glad they didn't. You know, Lord, thank you for the long time with just you and me so I can change and be a better me. You know, some stores have what's called a return policy. Amen. You buy something, it don't fit what you do. You return it. Just because something works for somebody else doesn't mean that it works for you. Or you need to apply to your life. Know yourself and be who God says you are. Some of the things we got to take back to the person and say, you know, I'm returning this. You gave me this, but I don't. this ain't working for me no more. Amen. It could be a relationship. You know he ain't no good for you. You know she ain't no good for you. It's toxic. You always fighting, fussing. You can't come to agreement on. I'm giving you your card back. Come on, somebody. This ain't working for me. Like David and Goliath, when he went to fat Goliath, they tried to give him all this huge armor. He was like, I can't use this stuff. It's too heavy for me. It's hanging up. I'm not used to that. But what he had was five stones in a slingshot. He was an expert at that. And so we have to give people their stuff back that they've been giving you. They say, you need to talk like this. You need to walk like this. Your hair needs to be this way. You need to dress this way. You know, if you want to get that job, you got to come in. No, baby. If you don't like the who I am, then that job ain't for me. Hallelujah. It is what it is. But we got to start returning some stuff back to some folk. Amen. People that made us who they want us to be. And as I said, as we go through this metamorphosis, as we go through this change, it's a freedom. My God, it's such a freedom in it. Woo! Hallelujah. It's such a peace in it. When you go through the change that I can take up all these layers of who I was trying to be and who they wanted me to be and who they said I should take this class and take that class and go do this and go do that. And we just like, Lord, what is going on? I'm more confused now than when I started. And so we got to start shedding some stuff, start returning some stuff, take, take, start taking some stuff off. And it starts with our mind. It says, be transformed be changed by the renewing of your mind using what we think and what we believe is what we're going to act upon so i gotta come in your presence i got to do what we call a switch a character switch a behavior switch then you're not the one for me change your thoughts and you will change what you are Change what you're saying about yourself. What are you saying about yourself while you're going through the process? It hurts when you're going. Let me tell you, when God was taking me through this, this season of metamorphosis, and it's going to be another season because we're always changing. We're always growing. We're always maturing. But when he was taking me through that, it was hard because I had to cut some folk loose, bro. I couldn't call him anymore. I didn't answer the phone call because it was toxic. I couldn't go some places anymore. It was hard, some things that I, I couldn't even fellowship with some people. Amen, because God began to pull the covers off and show me what they were truly about. He said, no, you can't get mixed up in that. And it hurt because I love these people. You fellowship with them, you spend time with them. Come on, somebody. But we gotta be willing to let some things go. What are you saying and thinking about yourself? Sometimes we have these recorders in our mind that when we grew up, when mama said, daddy said, auntie said, the, you know, the community said, the teacher might have said, hallelujah. We had those recordings. And so God had to sit me down and he had to pl hit play. And then he had to re-record. You know how when you had, for that day we had cassette tapes. Amen. And you could record it, but you could put that thing in there and you could re-record over it. You could put something else over. Then we went to CDs. You could put it in there. Amen. And sometimes we just had to pull all the tape out. Sometimes it just ain't no good. You can't do nothing with it. You got to pull all the tape out and just throw it away. And that's what God is saying. Some of us, we got to do all those negative things that's been told to you about you. You're never going to be nothing. You're never going to amount to nothing. You're just like your mama. You're just like your daddy. You're just like your uncle. All that negative stuff. You can't have that job. You can't live in that community. You can't have that. All that negative stuff. God said, I am your God. I own the hills and the cows on the hill. Everything 
belongs to me. If I said you can have it, you can have it. We gotta change your mind. I don't care what they say, what community it is, and what you say. Who said you can't come on a test? The devil is a liar. Who said you can't be in that community? The devil is a liar. If God said it's for you, then it's for you. Hallelujah. And he said he will fight for us. I love. I tell folks, I'm not the one you will mess with. Because my daddy fights for me. I know he loves me. Come on, somebody. I've seen God do some things to people for bothering me. And I warned them. I said, you are not the one you will mess with. Not because I was going to do anything. But because I know my daddy loves me. Hallelujah. And when I step back and take my hands off, and I'm not happy that there's certain things happen to people. I don't gloat in that. I cry for them because, like God, I tried to warn them. Hallelujah. But God will fight for us if we would just be still and go through the process. Stop trying to fight every battle that comes to you. He had to tell me because I, because of all the, some of the hardship and trauma that I went through, I was always ready to fight. I was already to take somebody that was always on edge. God said, you can't go through life like that. You have to allow me to heal that trauma, heal that hurt, heal that pain, heal that rejection, heal that disappointment, heal that hurt. You got to let me deal with that. You got to go through this transformation because I've got this out there for you. Hallelujah. So many people fear change because they don't know what change means for them. Well, if, if I stop doing this, then what's going to happen? If, if I don't go do this, what they going to say about me? If, if, I, if I break up with him, I don't know, we've been together for 15, 20 years, and, and you know, we're not married, but he, he's good to me, but he ain't good for me. Come on, Jesus. Woo! She's good to me, but she ain't good for me. And at some point, we've got to be able to say, I got to cut you loose. I got to let you go. I got to, God's got something up the road for me. He's got something better for me. Hallelujah. Maybe you're, maybe it ain't a Boaz for you, praise God. Maybe it's a Samuel. Maybe it's a Samson. Come on, somebody. Maybe it's a David. But whoever he got for you, he can't get you your blessing because you're holding on to the mess. God is saying, cut the sucker loose today. Come on, go through the change. Go through the change, amen. Don't fear change. Accept it. If God is saying, let it go, then I, I am witness and test and testify that whenever I let go of God said I got something better. Hallelujah. Change is not our enemy. It's necessary for growth, maturity, and our well-being. But we get dysfunctional, crippled, and useless when we stay in this state. That butterfly couldn't stay in there. At some point it had to come out. It had to learn to fly. The wings was new. It's like, oh, my, this feels good. I've been changed. What is this? Come on, it was already in them. See, people look at you in your caterpillar stage. Come on, Holy Ghost. People look at you in your caterpillar stage. They look at you in your crawling stage. You know, you got a job, praise God, working UPS, and ain't nothing wrong with UPS. You're just using it. But you got a job maybe in the cafeteria, or you got a job delivering mail, and they looking at you because they up here CEO or president. But they don't understand that I'm changing. They don't understand I'm transforming. They don't understand that I'm metamorphosing, that I'm shedding some things. They don't understand that God got me as a CEO and not just that, but the president, the owner of the company, the very one that you're working for, I'm coming for because God said it's mine. They don't understand. So don't let nobody look down on you while you're in your caterpillar stage. You come on, come on, caterpillar. Keep moving and keep going with God. Keep eating the word of God. Keep growing. Keep getting in God's face. Keep seeking him. Keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep worshiping. Keep Keep praising. Keep doing what you're doing because the butterfly stage is coming, baby. You're going to rise up on wings like an eagle and you're going to take up. Hallelujah. And then the very one that was looking down on you, you're going to be able to fly high above and look down on them to see. You thought that I was always going to be there. You didn't think I was going to rise, but I knew what God had in me. I had a word from the Lord. I had a promise from the Lord that he was going to deliver me. That I wasn't going to always be in that state. I got a word from the Lord that I'm about to fly and take on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't get dysfunctional. Don't, 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 don't get crippled. Don't, don't, don't get weary in your well-doing. Hallelujah. Let God use you even in your butterfly stage. We have to be careful, as I said, who we allow to come close to us during our changing process. We have to be in the right environment in order to change and grow. 
have to be mindful of what we consume during the change. Allow the word of God to transform you or you will die. It's the word of God that gives us life. Jesus, life everlasting. When I have a problem or issue, I go to the word of God first. Then if I don't understand it, I call on my, my apostle. Praise God. I talk to my husband. Or I call one of my other friends and I say, I need you to pray with me on this. I need clarity. I need direction. I need guidance. You know, the word of God says there's safety in the multitude of counselors. But we got to be mindful of who we talk to. We got to be mindful of who we let talk into us. We got to be mindful of what we eat. You can't sit up and watch TV all day, every day. Never read the word of God. Never pray. Never get alone with God. Come on, you can't do it. What you feed is what's going to come out of you. Allow the word of God to transform you. Then as we begin to grow and we begin to transform, we realize that what was good before may not be good right now. <laughs> and that's okay. I used to love butter pecan ice cream growing up. Amen. I used to love it. But butter pecan don't like me. <laughs> so I had to do something different. huh? What may have been good before may not be good right now. And that's okay. Huh? Some things that we used to do before wasn't all bad, but it ain't good for me where I am now. Amen? Hallelujah. So we got to grow and mature. Allow God to change us. There is a people out there. There are people in our families that are looking for somebody to take a stand and to live a holy and sanctified life. They done seen enough raggedness. They done seen enough messiness. I don't know about you, but growing up, I saw some mess in church. Whew. I was like, Lord, this truly, this can't be right. Is this what salvation looks like? Is this what Christianity looks like, God? But as I went through my change, my metamorphosis, and God in the word of God, I was like, you know, yeah, Lord, thank you. Thank you. And even in that, God, would, I was, you know, we had that innate in us that God would be talking to us, even as children. Come on, I was prophesying and seeing dreams and visions and see God was showing me things as a little girl. Amen. God was showing me things. I didn't understand it. I used to call it that someone used to tell me, say, you having premonitions. Didn't realize it was the prophetic that was on my life. And so when you were going through a metamorphosis, things God is bringing back things from your childhood. And he's showing you, even as a child, to teach him. And you used to pretend preaching. And you used to pretend singing the gospel. And you used to pretend praise dancing. Come on, somebody. And God is showing you that's what, that's who you are. That's your true. Before you were touched. Before your mind was screwed up from some of the mess they taught us in school. Before we got to hold us some nonsense. God is bringing us back. So I'm renewing you. I'm transforming you by the renewing of your mind. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11 says, when I was a child, I spake and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Growth and change will bring about separation. Change anyway, until you look like Jesus. Growth and change will bring separation. People don't, when they, sometimes when they see you coming, well, there goes that Jesus person. There goes that holy roller. All they talk about is Jesus. And that's not all we talk about, but it's the presence of God, the glory of God that's on our life, the light of God that's in our life. That as soon as we enter darkness, it disrupts things. You ever walked in a room and people were talking crazy when you walk in and get silent? It's not so much that people are talking about us, it's, it's the presence of God that's just into the room. Come on, somebody. You wonder why the people, some of the people you used to hang around with, they don't like you anymore. It's because of the glory of God that's on our lives. You're going to lose some folk. 
You're going to lose some family. They're going to say, you think you better than that. You think you better than me. I remember you. It could even be a sibling. Grow up in the same house and now they say, you think you better than us. We grew up in the same house, same mama, auntie, whoever. It's not that I think I'm better. I'm just better off. I had the love, the glory of God in my life. And I still love you, but I can't do those things. I can't get high with you no more. I can't go stealing with you no more. I can't go clubbing with you. I can't go double dating with somebody that ain't my husband or my spouse. I can't do that. I don't want to do those things anymore. And they don't understand it. So you're going to lose some folks, but change anyway. Until you look like Jesus. Be honest about who you are, what your needs are, and communicate that to others in a loving way. That's a part of the change. When you've truly been transformed and people told me you all crazy, because you've been transformed, uh -uh, that's what we're not going to do. We can correct folk. When people come on sometimes, you ain't got to say a word. Silence. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Be honest about who you are, where you are. God can work with us when we're hot or cold. He said if you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out of his mouth. If we're hot or cold, he can handle it. Because he knows where we at. So be honest with where you are in your walk with God. Be honest about your feelings, your, your ideas, whatever it is. Be honest with him. Be honest with him of what you need and your wants. And communicate that to him. He's ready, ready and willing to listen. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke. Upon you and learn of me. Hallelujah. He said, but my yoke is easy. My burden is light. He said, come. Come on, sit down here. Let us reason together. Let's talk about this thing. Lord, I don't like what I'm going through. It don't feel good. I don't like it. I told God that, Lord, I don't like this. This don't feel good, God. And he said, daughter, rest in me. I got you. It's for your good. And I cried some time going through it, but I went through it. Hallelujah. And you got to do the same thing. It don't feel good, but it's for your good. Yeah. So be content with who you are and where you are on the way to where you're going. Be content with who you are and where you are on the way to where you're going. Just be. God will allow us and our lives to be turned upside down so that we can change into who he called and chose us to be. Don't abort the process. Sometimes you start feeling uncomfortable, as I said. You don't like what you're going through. Your appetite changes. I know when I was going through, I used to watch TV. I don't want to watch TV no more. I just want to sit in the presence of God. People say, come on, let's go here today. I don't want to go there. I just want to be with God. As you're going through that metamorphosis, what you eat begins to change. Amen? Your desires change. You don't desire the same things as you go through your change. We were born with everything in us to become and be who God called and ordained us to be. For many of us, the process of transformation got tampered with. And the change was delayed, but it's not too late. My God, the resurrected power of Jesus Christ is more than able to transform us into another so that we come forth not looking like what we've been through. Come on. The power of Jesus when we come to him, he said, I know you was this. I know you did that. But if you will come to me and let me transform you, praise God. I remember the, the movie Transformers. They had I don't know about how many of them. But I used to like the bumblebee, the black and yellow car. Amen. And he was he was the baddest one in there, the leader. And so he would be doing this car, but what they didn't know that what was in him was a warrior. What was in him was more powerful than that car and four wheels. What was in him, he had a sword. Come on, somebody. He was a bad somebody. And that's what God is saying about us. People see you just as a little caterpillar. They see you just as the car, the bumble, as, as the, the bumblebee. They don't realize that there's a warrior in you that will rise up at the drop of a dime whenever it falls for you. 
Come on, somebody. You got to know who you are. And the transformer didn't come out all the time. <laughs> he only came out when it was necessary, when it was time to fight, when it was time to conquer, when it was time to get the victory. But Jesus wants to transform us like that. He wants to change us in another that till everything that we've been through, we don't even look like what we've been through. I wrote my first book, Produce, uh, Producing and Everything. It's called From Weeping to Joy. You can find it on Amazon. Denise Slaughter, amen, from Weeping to Joy. And I had some people read it and said, even my best friend, best friend for about 30, 40 years. Niece, I didn't know you went through some of that. God will hide you as you're going through your transformation. He will cover you with his wings. He won't allow anybody to get to you while you're going through. He will say, I've got you. Just stay here in my hands. I'm doing a new thing in you. And we get in his hand, get in his arms and stay in his hand and allow him to do what needs. Let him put his hands and form us in the potter's hand as he's forming us, making us into who he wants us to be. We all we got to do is be still and let him do what he needs to do. And when you come out and you tell your story, they'll be like, bro, you don't look like nothing like what you've been through. To God be the glory. Sometimes God has to turn our lives upside down so that we can live right side up. I'm changing with no intentions of going back. Is that your testimony today? I'm changing God. I'm here today. And I know I haven't always done everything right and I still miss the mark, God, but I'm changing. Your hands are on me. And I'm ready to go through this transformation. I'm not going to fight it, God. I'm ready to go through the change. You know, there's a saying that you can either endure the change and remain the same, or you can endure the change of being who God created you to be. So you can either stay there where you are, or you say, God, I want to endure the pain change. Endure the pain of remaining the same or endure the pain of change. What will be your choice today? All over the building, Facebook Live, YouTube. If this message touched you in any way, you say, Pastor Denise, I need to change. God has been calling me higher, been calling me to another level, been calling me to get closer to you been drawing me. I, I, I heard him and he's told me some things I got to do, some things, some people I got to let go of, some changes I got to make and I didn't want to do it because I was afraid. Fear is not of God. Anything that God asks us to do is for our good. So if that is you today, then just raise your hand and say, Father God, I come before you today. I know my attitude hasn't been right. My heart hasn't been right. My mind hasn't been right. I've been fighting and resisting the change. Right now, I humbly submit under your all-powerful hand. Change me, God. Change me to who you have called, ordained, planned for me to be. I don't want to remain the same. I'm willing to endure the change, the pain of change. As I go through my metamorphosis, I say yes to your will, and I say yes to your way. Maybe you're out there today. That was you. God bless you. Enjoy it. Trust me. It's for the good. If you're out there today, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you said, Pastor Lee, I heard what you said today, but I want to know this Jesus who changed you. Some of y'all know the lifestyle that I live be before Christ. And you know God is real. And you're saying to me, Pastor Denise, 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 I want that relationship. I want a relationship like that with God. I want him to change my life. I'm tired of doing my own thing. Being my own God. Being the ass of my own life. I want Jesus. And all you have to do is confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sin, of selfishness and being self-centered and doing things your own way. Say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Change me. I know it's going to be hard. I know there will be times I don't like it, it don't feel good, but I'm willing to trust you. 
and she changed me into a nun. That I don't look like nothing that I think. You said that prayer. You believed it in your heart. You have a made up mind that no matter what, I'm going to walk with Jesus for the rest of my life. And welcome to the body of Christ. Amen. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. We are rejoicing that you have made a decision to be in the kingdom of God. Welcome. Amen. With that one that's out there that's still on the fence, you're not quite sure what came from you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. But you gotta come to him. He said, if you come to him, he will in no wise cast you out. I know the devil is telling you, you're too far gone. You have done too much. Jesus won't forgive you of that. He won't take you. There's a lies from the devil. His will is to kill, sin, and destroy. But God said, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it that more abundant. Make a decision today. I'm going to change the way I think and the way I am. And I'm choosing Jesus. Father God, we thank you for this message today that you have spoken to us. I'm so glad for the change, God. I'm so glad that you didn't give up on us, God. I'm so glad that you didn't take your hand off me. You didn't take your eye off. I'm so glad that you loved me in spite of me. I'm so glad that you changed me, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm going to live the rest of my life. Hallelujah. Tell the God to come to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To love them in spite of their Lord. And it's not your will that they perish, but that they have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praise. We honor you, Father. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for coming out. Amen. Praise God. We will not be here next Sunday. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We will let you know who we are. And my brother, thank you so much for joining us today. It was an honor for you to be in our presence. Amen. Do you want prayer? Are you going back home today? Uh, no, I'm just going to be. Uh, my name is Pastor Ben Wilson. Praise God.